Adventures of Hurry Man. No, it's not a knockoff of the Maltese Falcon. The Golden Vulture is a ship. Our captain is a little off. Yeah, there's the bottle, but I have a feeling the rum is long gone. Come in. Come in, blast it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I brought you pie, sir. <laughs> Fits me real good, don't it, huh? Well, no, not really. He's drunk enough that he starts abusing his orderly, scurvy by name, a word which, as we know, evokes images of summer days and elegant ladies with parasols, or something like that. The captain keeps trying to goad him into a fight, but scurvy won't take the bait. Instead, he gets an idea. Message in the bottle, yeah. Message in the bottle. The captain mentioned that they were close to shore, so his bottle might have a chance. In fact, sharp-eyed young reporter Jimmy Olsen just found it while he was fishing. The seawater got into the bottle and you just can't read any of the writing. Wait a minute. Back up. Hold it right there. Zoom in on the bottle. I said the bottle, not Jimmy's nipples, but I guess this is the best we can do. Sharpen it up a little. I'm no expert, but it looks to me as though if the seawater found a way in, it found a way out again, too. That thing is dry inside. Still, there's only one person in the room who can read anything on it. Well, it must have been printed for a ship. It has SS Golden Vulture on it. But if there was a message, it's long since been washed off. Cheapers, I couldn't make out anything but a smudge. Golden Vulture, that's a wild guess, and I'll prove to you I'm right. You mean his super-duper vision can't rearrange the graphite particles from the bottle and put them back into place so he can read the message? Some super guy. So you phoned the Maritime Commission and they say there is a ship called the Golden Vulture. Exactly. That only proves Mr. Kent wasn't guessing. What are you looking so smug about? I only told Clark and the Chief part of it. I didn't tell them the vulture's anchored off the coast right now, and I didn't tell them what kind of a ship it was. It's a treasure salvage ship, and it's just come back from dragging the bottom in the Caribbean. Why would someone throw a message overboard from it? That's what the two of them are going to find out. It's anchored in the harbor, and there's a mail boat leaving for it. A mail boat with two passengers on their way to a treasure ship. A ship with someone on board who was desperate enough to throw a message overboard and hope it got somewhere. And nobody knows where they're going. This should go smoothly. On a side note, I didn't realize those mail boats could take on passengers. Then again, it was 1954. I was a year old. What did I know? The captain isn't crazy about having visitors. Those aren't visitors. They're reporters. Let's get the mail boat on the hailer, Mr. Bennett. We'll ship them back. It's too late, Captain. Well, then I guess it's up to me to entertain him. Now he's even less thrilled. It remains to be seen what he intends to do about them. You blasted idiots! I thought I told you! Sorry, mate. Subtle, dude, but Jimmy didn't see it. That was his camera. See, before they looked like this, cameras looked like that. The flash was a one-time use bulb that burned itself out and had to be changed before every picture. And the pictures were actually analog. They exposed the light to a piece of sensitive film and then the film had to be put through a bunch of toxic chemicals to produce the image except all the black and white tones were reversed. Hence it was called a negative. You had to put the negative into a sort of vertical projector called an enlarger project the image onto a piece of light sensitive paper then put the paper through a bunch of toxic chemicals to produce the actual useful picture. I really got into it for a while and had my own complete darkroom where I could process black and white or color photos. So, with it being so different now, do I ever get nostalgic for those days? Are you out of your mind? The captain takes them to his office and says, can you keep a secret? He knows they're reporters. 
<laughs> you were wondering why the Golden Vulture's in such a hurry to get back to the Caribbean, eh? Well, this is nothing compared to what's still down there on the bottom. He knows they're reporters, and he's showing them all this stuff, and they don't think that's odd. Scurvy is listening outside the porthole, and he definitely thinks it's odd. He's writing another note. Get out of here, I told you. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Stuart. Uh, Jimmy, isn't this uh, rather an interestingly shaped bottle? Huh? Hey, that's the same kind of bottle as before, and this note is written on the same kind of paper that... Nice going, Jimmy. I think you just got yourself, Lois, and Scurvy killed. Another note, Scurvy. Up to your old tricks again, Scurvy. <laughs> Peter Whitney pretty well made an entire career out of playing this sort of villain. His size, face, and demeanor were perfect for roles that needed someone to look pure evil. And although he found steady work in movies and TV, we can see that he's quite overweight and apparently he didn't take very good care of himself. He succumbed to a heart attack at 55. Take something away from this, you younger folks. Take care of yourself now. Whether you realize it or not, you're not immortal. Nobody is. Well, there was that one guy, but you're not him. So take care of yourself, please. Take me ashore with you. The captain is crazy. This ship is... I didn't read it. I don't know what it says. Not even what it says about the treasure? And we were having such a good time. He says, too bad nobody can leave this cabin. He doesn't bother to add the word alive. But Jimmy has the perfect counter-argument. If I don't get home about this time, my mother starts to worry. Aye, and this time she'll have something to worry about. Okay, maybe not quite as perfect as Jimmy thought it was. Meanwhile, despite Lois's sneaking off, Clark has a fair idea what she's up to and what she's dragged Jimmy into. He talked to the mailboat captain and learned that they're still out there on the ship. Now the next question is, what does he do next? I'm sorry, all right? Yeah. Can you give me a hand? Food for the vulture, huh? <laughs> what are they eating out there, lead? Not all of them, just Lois, Jimmy, and Scurvy. Oh, he means, never mind. Hmm, that box is going to the ship. Looks like the captain is doing his salvaging right here in Metropolis. But what's he do with it then? It's time for Clark to change into something more comfortable. Seems like I heard that sound once before. Then something hit me on the head and I never did find out what the sound was. I thought he said nobody was leaving the cabin. Maybe it's been too long since Scurvy took a bath. Teen men on the dead man's chest, you who who and a bottle of rum. No, he's drunk again. Now would be the time to overpower him and get out of there, but Jimmy isn't that resourceful and Lois is too much of a lady. But it isn't Superman who emerges from the shadows, it's Clark Kent. Why, I really don't know. Once he's sure the captain isn't going to harm Jimmy and Lois anytime soon, he's off to the cargo hold to see Scurvy. This is a treasure ship, all right, mate. But not the kind she's rigged to be. Come on, I'll show you. I know we have run time to fill and this show is notorious for its padding, but stop talking in riddles and just tell him! And us. This is where they make it. The oven and molds are over there. They melt it down. You mean the treasure? They make their own treasure. This is where the goldsmith works. They've even got a jeweler served to hitch in prison once. But what was that stuff in the crate that Clark saw with his x-ray vision? It looked an awful lot like the same stuff they're making. So they take ancient treasure, melt it down, and make new treasure and sell it to museums as authentic ancient treasure? On the other hand, it's kind of hard to tell what this stuff is. It's obviously jewelry and lots of it, but is it ancient or is it the loot from a few jewelry store robberies? The overlay in this image is vague enough that it could go either way. 
So I suppose we need to give the captain the benefit of the doubt and assume he's taking modern jewelry, stolen of course, and converting it into pirate treasure so he can sell it to museums for a fortune or two, or three. He may be crazy, but I guess we can surmise that he's not stupid. Drunk is another matter. The supply barge has arrived and unloaded its cargo. That means the big boss is on board, so Clark can bop him on the bean and belay his booty building. That's it. All in one load. See you next trip. Mr. Sanders, what about them two reporters? You allowed them aboard, Mr. McBain, so it's up to you. I'll see that they reported drowned on the trip ashore. Good luck explaining how, because anybody who knows Lois knows she has more sense than to go near the railing when the boat is in motion. Especially when she's dealing with people that she already knows are suspicious. Over here. What's the matter? Don't you even say hello? What? How did you get out here? Never mind. Tell that barge to shove off without you. I will not. Sailor, tell the barge to go on. Uh, uh, I'll be sailing with you. I will not. Oh, yes, I will. I love a man who stands by his convictions. Shove off. Sanders orders. Sanders? Sanders, of course. I should have known. Confidence man and jewel thief. Sanders won't believe that's just a finger in his back. He says he knows steel when he feels it. Nice touch. Under pressure from the steel finger, he spills the whole operation. We've been gold and silverware to the ship from all over the country. Grab it, somebody! But be careful, he's got a finger. Why, you will <laughs> I included that because it's just so goofy. The captain grabs a belaying pin and decides to join the fray. <laughs> However inadvisable that may have been. Superman, where are you? You don't know? Jeepers, Mr. Kent, where'd you come from? Look out, kid. No, but we just got loose from the cabin. He's on the bridge. Cut him off on the port side. Go on, leave oh, me alone. Mark, you can't fight the whole ship. You don't have him. <laughs> And with their help, he's not going to find out either. It's cliché time. Clark gets to walk the plank. Now, that was never a common thing. Fiction writers in Hollywood basically blew it all out of proportion. There are maybe half a dozen documented cases, that's it. More commonly, if a pirate and his crew got enough of someone, they didn't go to all the trouble with the plank and stuff. They just threw him overboard. But the plank makes better drama. No, you're crazy! You've been playing pirates so long, you believe in your Get down! Hey, Dave! I know you have to kill him, but you can't make a man walk the plank! Get out of here! This is my ship, do you hear? What was good enough for Blackbeard is good enough for me! Captain, I knew Blackbeard. Blackbeard was a friend of mine. You're no Blackbeard. Maybe this will be a lesson to the rest of you swine! We'll fly the Jolly Roger yet! This guy watched way too many Errol Flynn movies. Clark goes into the water, and the other two go into irons down below. We all know what happens next. Superman! Doesn't this guy read the planet? Now he has to go buy more bullets. It's time for the real fight scene. I didn't realize antiquities fraud was a hanging offense. Some more of that, and it's time to square off with the Blackbeard wannabe. Ha! Look what you did to that perfectly good fake antique sword. And I want him to tell me how many times Blackbeard did that. Then again, the authorities finally hunted Blackbeard down, and he died violently. Maybe that's not someone you want to be. Hurry, Superman, Mr. Kent's drowning. I know, Jim. They made him walk the plank. I saw him. Will you please not worry? Look, I'll show you a trick. But Mr. Kent's down there. They tied his hands behind him. It's been less than a minute, Jimmy. He'll just have to hold his breath a little longer. What is he doing? Why doesn't he just say he already rescued Mr. Kent and deposited him on shore? Why is he jerking them around like this? 
Well, that should hold him till I can signal the Coast Guard. Superman, what's the matter with you? Here, Jim, you better hold this. Superman, will you please get down there and save Mr. Kent? I'll never forgive you if he drowns. All right, all right, I'm going. But I'm finished here, and I won't be back. I don't care, just save Clark. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Clark Kent slash Superman is not a likable character. He's smug, arrogant, manipulative, and always exudes an air that says, I'm better than you, no matter which identity he's in. He's not a nice boy. I don't know why they wrote him this way, but I frankly don't like him. I think if he and I were to have lunch, I'd be ready to leave within five minutes. There is no good reason for him to treat them like this. As I said, all he has to say is, I already took care of him, he'll be waiting for you on shore. Problem solved and nobody's blood pressure is going through the roof. Clark, Clark, are you all right? Oh, sure, Lois. <laughs> Just a little wet, that's all. Why, worried? Well, yes, I, I mean, Superman waited so long and, and... Yes? And you appeared right after he disappeared. Oh, Lois, now, uh, I... give me your hand, will you? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, I probably would have done that too just because I had the chance. I'll give him that one. Thanks for watching, kids. And remember, clicking that like button is cool. Subscribing is even cooler. Leaving a comment is as cool as the coolest person you know. And becoming a patron makes you almost just like Superman. So don't hesitate. Do it today. Until next time.